so good morning everyone once again and uh, i guess by now you must have had some good insight in various you know aspect or how incubation activities got evolved at iit bombay over a period of time i joined this place sometime in year 2004 and uh, it was the time when they were actually formalizing the process from you know crisi tit incubator a departmental activity into actually um, uh, setting up an independent entity you know a business unit uh, who was to do the business of business incubation at iit bombay and when i see at the history of incubation at iit bombay i you know there is a very clear cut segment the first incubator came during the time there was no precedent in the country even we ourselves didn't know what is business incubator what I, what is entrepreneurship because like business incubator is not only infrastructure right you have to mentor your companies you have to advise them so you don't have to only learn incubation dynamics but also entrepreneurship related dynamics and we 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 didn't have any experience in doing this fortunately you know we really were blessed with our alumni support it was not only in terms of you know uh, financial assistance but also we got lots of mentoring how to manage business incubator and in the process you know we incubated some good companies 12 13 companies got incubated many of them are successful but the major impact that the incubator was having on the campus was that you know uh, entrepreneurship was not really popular when we started but it it really popularized entrepreneurship down the line five years students faculty members like for students you know it was a dot com boom time you know they were really opting for jobs and so on and so forth uh, like even uh, internship basically they were going for heavy pay internship job because of you know three months four months kind of good time was available no one was thinking about entrepreneurship but down the five year line five years after sign was set up suddenly we saw a flow of student you know keen to go for setting up their own venture and similar was the case for faculty members that like uh, who were uh, like commercialization is always not seen with positive mindset in this institution because it seems as a distraction from you know course re core research activity but we have now out of 16 or 17 company we have you know 10 10 11 companies which has faculty involvement so huge impact in in creating awareness about entrepreneurship that was first impact and second impact was that you know incubator really help us or rather gave us first it incubator gave us you know hands on experience in how to manage incubator yeah uh, especially we learn lots of commercial aspect legal aspect which you really require when you start an independent entity so i think the whole day is basically meant today for sign how we evolved the process how we structured our relationship with with the host and then later part of the day my colleague shushant will talk about you know what kind of ecosystem you need to have and uh, how how do you create your network how how do you manage your company so and so forth i'll tell mainly on structure uh, structure aspect so a very quick overview uh, uh structuring business incubator entity which will uh, have you know setting up the entity as well as you know creating an appropriate business model in fact yesterday we have lots of discussion on that and how do we evolve our you know created or formalized you know relationship with parent institute and some of the policy aspects a quick prelude you might be aware but still you know at the cost of repetition sign was set up in year 2004 hosted by iit bombay to manage business incubator on its campus and our initial financial support as well as entire infrastructure support came from iit bombay our business is incubation and any activity that deals with entrepreneurship or the, which has you know impact on entrepreneurship so 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 we 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 don't get into any activity which is not really 
you know related to entrepreneurship so for example we don't get into tech tech commercialization we don't get into any kind of consulting which is technology side or whatever business consulting unless it involves you know some kind of entrepreneurship and element and there is a reason why we are focusing i'll deal with that you know in later part of my talk iit bombay has you know certain govern, uh, representation on our governing board we we have 15 member governing board half of of which half of them is coming from iit bombay again it's part of you know our deal with the relationship with the uh, parent institute primary focus remains on iit bombay which is also eligibility criteria iit bombay community iit bombay technology we take only ip based and product based companies we don't take services company or consulting company again fall out of our deal with the whole institute Uh, since iit bombay being a premier institute in the country it has certain you know um, uh, responsibility towards you know social and strategic aspect of the country and as a part of mandate we have also been asked to you know incubate uh, ventures which has a social as social as well as strategic venture though many times they don't make commercial sense yeah but we we incubate this our support system is you know physical infrastructure technical support but we emphasize a lot on business network support mentoring expertise and professional exp expertise so so what could be the possible business model when you really think of setting up a business incubator yeah either it could be part of the uh, institute project or or you create an independent activity uh, entity and like we had both like when we were small scale we started or when when we were more in experimental mode we started off as an institute activity because you don't have your you know other other obligations uh, you know administrative costs or managing cost or infrastructure costs everything is absorbed by the institute when we are you are in experimental mode also some uh, you know Well, scale of activity also affects the decision whether you want to start on your own or you want to set up an entity for example if you want to start an you know incubator with the strength of four five incubator doesn't make sense to spin out or doesn't make a sense to set up an independent entity because cost of entity managing entity would be much higher than your own scale of the activities so what kind of scale of activities that you are going to have it also becomes one of the influencing factor whether you want to create as a part of you know institute activity or take out separately availability of resources because incubators take long to become you know sustainable or at least first revenue generation could be in second year or third year of the operation and you require resources to run the show managing infrastructure people cost other admin cost you know what kind of resources are available if you if you if if any institute doesn't or is not able to mobilize resource offer and it is better to be part of the host institute where other costs can be absorbed by by the parent institute domain focus so if i can give the example of iit bombay like first was it incubator it made more sense to be part of the departmental activity but now we are a full fledged incubator we can't restrict ourselves to any particular department so makes more sense to make a independent activity dealing with different you know domains uh, and then of course host uh, host institutes commitment and commitment is not only intention also doability i'll deal with this in second sec, uh, later slide but for 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 your information all government programs be it dst mcit biotech industry uh, their programs which fund incubator they insist for independent entity so if you are planning to go to the government financial help come out with a appropriate bi a viable business plan with a separate entity government doesn't fund if it is the part of the parent institute so commitment of the host institute as i said it is not necessarily the intention but doability first 
legal check you need to do is that your parent institute host constitution whether it allows you to get into this kind of activity in fact you know in our case we learn one uh, one one lesson when we started it incubator we adopted equity model and when we adopted equity model we didn't know that time that iit bombay cannot hold equity uh, no I, i think by and large in india no academic institute which is funded by state government or federal government uh, can hold equity that's that's the rule that i have I, i have observed private probably private institute would have different different but if they are again trust and all those thing because of trustee related laws you know you can't hold the equity so uh, uh, so 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 i'm telling you about only equity part but i think it is good to do a legal check suddenly you especially you know if you are from uh, csir lab or those kind of domain you know where the focus is really on research side sometimes commercialization especially if it is a defense kind of lab commercialization is not really permitted so those those aspect one one may need to get get into what kind of financial commitment is coming from the host institute i i told you it takes a while basically for an incubator to start generating revenue or become self sustainable whereas you always require your operational cost up front yeah so you need fund and you have to ensure that you know your so infrastructure is not the only thing that you should look from your parent institute you should also look for some of the cash coming to the incubator so that you can sustain your operations and then there is always a conflict research and academic versus you know uh, entrepreneurship and incubation india doesn't have a long history of technology commercialization commercialization is not always seen with positive mindset especially in academic institutes like iits or csir lab yeah priority within the host institute is you know again research and academics and no host will want its faculty members to pursue entrepreneurship at the cost of basic you know job which is again research so they wouldn't like their faculty members to to spend time on the their startup for you know four days out of five working days you know, so all those issues you need to sort out with the uh, uh, host institute many time there is a lack of awareness like in in for example in iit bombay you know we have one some platform to commercialize technology iit bombay process is permit com- uh, technology licensing it permits <coughs> consulting you know uh, uh, assignments to be undertaken by um, the faculty members but if you look at it entrepreneurship is bit on risky it's a risky affair right so faculty members many time take a very safe safe uh, route that why to get into this you know jamela when you have a safe route to on your own money but the upscale is really limited if you go by those routes and don't start up you know your own and you own your own venture you know so there is a lack of awareness also so i think ideally if uh, uh case studies need to be discussed fortunately we had a good case study in cricket itself and they spoke by the you know by themselves and like created awareness about faculty members in fact one of the reason why sign came up was also there was a huge demand from faculty side because during cricket we had two faculty uh, based companies and suddenly like you know everyone noticed that that okay it's it's possible people are doing it and we have ready product why can't we also start something so one of the reason to also have a separate entity or broad spectrum incubator as against it incubator was faculty demand yeah then another is the target audience like i already address about faculty but for student also there is a dilemma high paying job is available why to get into entrepreneurship which require front investment plus you know success is not ensure and especially when you don't have a long history to relate with yeah so like uh, that dilemma also so you have to create the awareness about you know overall entrepreneurship i'll deal in second session how did 
we deal to propagate that or how we actually attract entrepreneurs coming to IIT, uh, to the incubator. And then you have to deal with conflicting issue like faculty time, infrastructure usage. Uh, institute will not like it's a, uh, you know, infrastructure, lab facility, equipment to be used for the company purpose. So you have to have a mechanism how they access this on the payment and how do you root the system. IP, IP once it is, you know, developed at IIT Bombay, ownership belongs to IIT Bombay. How do you transfer those IP? Because without transferring, you can just start your own venture. So those are the issues ne one needs to deal with. Then once, once a call is taken to set up a legal entity, it has uh, actually an Indian context, what kind of entity you set up? So it's for profit entity or not for profit entity? And uh, I, I, I already said that, you know, state government or federal government funded academic institute, they, they have their limitation, they can't get into any activity which is for profit activity. In fact, in India, we have for profit incubators which are three or four, they all are in private, private domain. None of them is added to academia. Yeah. So, and if you are coming from that background, you have to decide whether you are going for this and again do the legal check with the parents institute. Yeah. If it is for non-profit, there are three entities you could go for, section 25 company, trust or society. Each has its plus and minuses. Section 25 company, it's a, it, it is a really very structured and professional entity. And um, it's easy to invite, you know, good, good board, uh, good members on your board if you are basically, because it looks more, compliances are on higher side, looks more transparent. You know, lots of things are basically regulatory issues take care of compliances and transparency. So it's a good, good entity. But again, compliances are difficult and all academic institutions, they don't have bandwidth to comply with all regulator requirement. So when I, also I think it's incorporate, you people are section 25, incorporation process really takes very long. Any change in constitution also becomes difficult. It takes about three to six months to come out with. Trust is a very, very narrow this thing. Again, trustees, you know, from state to state regulators, actually they differ. And sometimes uh, trustee regulators, especially we, we had an, we didn't have a too pleasant experience uh, with, the, with the regulator of trust in Maharashtra. And uh, more than that, I think it's a very, like, you know, you have to define your the financial statement upfront. You have to submit with trustee upfront and you don't have any uh, you know, flexibility to deviate from them. So it becomes a very, very binding and small, uh, narrow, uh, um, inflexible, you know, entity. Society, a sign is a society. We chose society as against company because we, we felt that society, once you set up your own constitution or charter, and if you are within that charter, you know, you have enough amount of flexibility. And also, like, you know, we wanted to stay away with uh, Section 25 company more from compliance viewpoint. And when we formalized this uh, Section 20, uh, sorry, society sign, by then already two incubators in the country had come. In fact, you know, when we started, we set up sign, that time we were also not too clear about how, how what would be the government's take. Yeah, DST were just starting to uh, fund, fund this thing, but whether it will be appreciated or not, or like, you know, you are taking this commercial activity, none of us had clarity on that side. And uh, IISC and Delhi had directly set up without getting into pilot mode, sometime in uh, early 90s, they set up their society. So we thought that since there is a precedent, let us, uh, you know, go by society itself. So one was flexibility and another was there was already precedent, so we went into it. Now government is very clear that all academic institute can actually host the incubators. But that time there was no clarity. Five years, there is a long, big change, you know, in mindset of the government also. Then it's good to have a, you know, business plan upfront, which will give you some idea about the viability. 
Uh, and it's very important because you, you, you want to get into commercialization, but you don't want to get into an entity which is not viable by itself. So how do you generate your revenue model? What would be the scale of the activity? How the incubator will look like down the line three, four, five years? And that will give, by writing the business plan will give you a very good, you know, idea where to focus your own efforts. Yeah, so it's good to write, you may not stick to that business plan, you know, you may overperform or underperform, but it will give the idea how the entity will look like. Then figure out where the initial funding will come and fund for operation will come and what would be the other sources of revenue down the line, you know, two to three years. Very important, you have to have right set of people. I hate to say this good professor is not there, but you, academicians should not be put, you know, in charge of this incubator entity. It is always good to get some external people who have worked in the industry at least for some time and understand the industry dynamic, yeah. But right set of people, you know, and uh, actually IIT Bombay did a very good job on this. Right from Chrisit Incubator, Professor Lagu, also our every professor in charge who is part of I, uh, science, you know, they have exposure to commercial world. So what we talk, they can understand. And if they can't understand, they generally don't, don't meddle in our affairs. So that's a very good job. Uh, you know, IIT Bombay has done. So first, Professor Fartak, tremendous exposure to industry. Then Professor Lagu, who was put in charge of running. Then Professor Surya Narayan, he was Dean R&D, tremendous exposure to industry. So ideally, you need to have people who are not pure academicians. And of course, our operational team. <laughs> so then, while you form the entity, we, you need to understand which place you want to register. For all three that I explained earlier, Section 25, Trust and Society, there are federal acts, but they have state specific, you know, offices and also for society and trust, they have state uh, specific uh, 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 separate acts, basically. So you are not only uh, get regulated by the federal act, but you are also get regulated by, um, you know, state specific act. And it, it's amazing to see that, you know, uh, society registrar in Karnataka are much more flexible than society uh, uh, regulator in Maharashtra. In fact, it was a revelation to us when we were going through the process and if you set up a society in Bombay, Maharashtra, state of Maharashtra, you actually ruled by three regulators, yeah? So one is basically society registrar, then all, all, all society in Maharashtra have to be registered under Bombay Public <coughs> Trust Act. So you get ruled by a regulator for the trust and they all are, both the entities, be it trust or be it, you know, society, under one, one umbrella of charity commissioner. So three set of regulators come in our, our case. Fortunately, they are internally very well synced. So we, we have to comply with one guy and automatically other guys get complied with. But if they have different regulation, then you, again, you know, things are very difficult too. Yeah. So it's important. All these complications are not there, uh, for example, in um, Andhra Pradesh or Karnataka. That's what I learned later on. Important to know the place of registration and same the place of the, uh, know your regulator. Compliance is very important thing. Uh, then constitution of business incubator. Constitution mainly, what is the objectives? And then, uh, what are the, uh, you know, rules and regulations? Very important because especially for all entities, you can't do anything which is not part of, you know, your constitution. And especially if you are a Section 25 company, to change the constitution is very difficult. I won't say it is impossible, it is time consuming. Yeah. So work on a proper constitution which is not limiting your activity, which give you... So right now, like for example, we are right now limiting to business incubator. But going forward, we may expand into some other activities. So we have actually, 
you know, budgeted for certain activity that we are talking right now, debating that we want to get into it. We have budgeted almost five years back and they, are, they have some provisions into it. So have a long, long term view when, when you get into, when you work on your constitution, don't do any copy paste job. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Most of the uh, legal entities, they are doing copy paste job. So doing it, but try to figure out your own focus and best one that you can work on the constitution. Governing structure, actually that is the, uh, this is very important. Governing structure, what do I mean by is basically your board of supervisory board, board of directors. And uh, they bring lots of, you know, value addition to the incubator. In fact, in our case, our major strength, science major strength, we say that it comes from our in, uh, governing board. We have seven, eight members from IIT Bombay, but we have equal number of people from the industry who are entrepreneurs, who are industry people, who are consultants, who are investors. And they, they are the biggest, you know, uh, uh, strength for, for sign. They are very good. And it's not the case that you need to have a high profile, you know, governing board, but you need to have people who can spend time for for your strategy, for for advising the incubator. So governing structure, it's good, uh, um, you know, uh, to work on. Also, being when you are hosted by parent institute, they want that their representation has to be there on your body. And that becomes basically part of the constitution so that any person who is coming uh, you know, later point of that time cannot fiddle around with those numbers and representation. And then put who will be the operating team and uh, how big the team and structure, operation structure. I think we, we had enough discussion we can carry on yesterday, there were quite a few. But governing structure is more main like, you know, your board of governors, board of directors, which gives, you know, more direction and strategic uh, guidance to the company. Advisory board is something different. It, advisory board could also, in, you know, uh, include people with certain specific expertise. Here the whole, what direction, you know, incubator will get into, what kind of strategy you should adopt, yeah, at a, at a you know, broader level, you know, and there are certain strategic decisions you only take at the board level. You don't take at a, especially, you know, which impacts the whole direction of the venture. Really, you know, huh? Just like managerial uh, aspects of it. That is uh, operational, day-to-day -day operation. It's policy makers. Yeah, they are mainly policy makers. Because key decisions which make Right, right. No, it's only board, it's only board and your team. Yeah, so in our case, we meet once a quarter that is religious. Oh, yeah. It's, we, we follow almost corporate norms. And uh, sign is managed also like a corporate entity in that sense. Shall I go forward? I think we, we briefly discussed, in fact, at large we discussed, but still, uh, like if you have certain unanswered question, you can also mention today. Uh, we essentially adopted, you know, equity model because we were to deal with startups and in uh, startup entrepreneurs and first generation entrepreneurs where cash was always a problem. Risk taking was, you know, when we started off in, in, in crisis time, I'm telling. Risk taking was not a, you know, norm, norm of the youth on, in those days. So we thought let us share a front cash investment, you know, reduce their cash investment requirement by adopting a equity structure. So we give you either free or subsidized, you know, support and you give us equity uh, against it. Whenever you get funded, we, we, we liquidate our equity and, and cash, you know, take some cash inflow out of it. So that was the philosophy. I don't know, Professor Fartak mentioned, he always likes to mention about the marriage problem. Do you know, uh, did he mention? So actually there was single marriage problem incident why we adopted this equity structure and that was the first for entrepreneur. Yeah, but in the process it worked out for us. Like, you know, 
and we thought we will stick to this uh, even when we set up sign but there are there were some lessons then that we learn in the process first thing equity takes a long to liquidate yeah investment generally in indian startup nowadays trend has changed but like when we started even when we started sign people won't be able to get investment in first two years or so uh, so that was one thing second thing is that it incubator was pretty unstructured and free support and very small small rent support you know people would tend to stay long in this case because it's a very protected environment and all those things so we learned that you know doesn't make sense to give free lunch so start rent from day one it could be subsidized but late late now entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurs realize that you have to put up front some cash and by now you know that like that aversion to take the risk has also gone down so uh, uh, from pure equity we introduced equity plus rent so increase it itself we introduced for next so three years support first two years free free support and next one year basically we would take rent and that rent was very negative from there we came to a position that no you should start taking rent very front so equity rent but again that rent we differentiated in sign today what we do is that first 3 years we break into two two blocks 18 months 18 months so we pick up the equity we take the rent but first 18 months rent is heavily subsidized and next 18 months subsidy continues but subsidy elements go down it is also basically you know a process to gearing up the startup by increasing their cost that is once you graduate you have to have, you will have much more cost than what you are paying so it is one of the way to put a pressure on them yeah so pure equity equity plus rent for one year equity plus differential rent and then we have also taking revenue i also mentioned why we take revenue revenue is very small one or two percent and that too for limited period two to three years so it do really doesn't burden a company yeah then if a company is growing so we typical support is one company unit but many times we have seen uh, three four companies in the incubator have team size of 30 35 people so if they can sustain then they might as well you know take up larger additional set so if we give more than one room we charge them higher rent you know so we we have also basically uh, push them to get into really commercial venture in that sense so higher rent for additional support and it helps us to get our cash so that you know we also keep our uh, running our operations efficiently then in it days we were not maintaining equity but we we realized that you know boys are smarter than us so we maintain we we came out with this equity maintenance you know clause i think yesterday i already spoke about it but if you have confusion you can ask me i can again you know uh, explain the whole whole equity structure partial liquidation again you know we took a decision that was not initial understanding but we learned that you know where do you get the cash from so 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 partial liquidation at every stage of investment we define investment because they were actually phasing out investment lower investment at a lower valuation we take our exit and then they get you know higher money so we also define the term what would be investment anything below that cap you know we'll, we will not turn term the investment so that we don't get a raw deal and everything is put in our agreement with the company so there is a legal obligation on the company we can we generally don't do but we can actually take a legal recourse if they don't comply with yeah so it's part of our legal arrangement with the company they have to ensure that all those thing happen companies uh reg formally registered uh companies so so you're doing legal contracts with actual companies or you're doing legal contracts with individuals no our our criteria is uh, incorporated company so when we take they have to be company so we don't do with individuals uh, then it becomes very difficult to enforce this so it's company so even if company graduates yeah 
and we if we continue to hold the equity, they are still bound by these clauses. Yes, that yeah. means uh, the individual or a team which wants to start a company in sign, they first register in ROC, register yeah. of companies. Yeah, we and give then, three months. Uh, we so we take the company. Mm -hmm. We give three months to them to get themselves registered. Okay. And if they don't register, then they have to move out. Yeah, till such time you accommodate them in sign. Three months is enough. But I think we haven't faced a problem where company was not registered. Most of the clients come to us after registration. So when they apply and they get a sense that they, there is a potential to get into it, they just registered the yeah, company. What is the I mean, uh, investment they have to make to get registered? It's a, that's what yesterday I was mentioning. The requirement is very low. In Indian Companies Act, okay. you know, it's 100,000 100, rupees, 1 lakh. Like that is a minimum capital and most companies start with minimum 1 lakh capital. Okay. Yeah. Then they keep on pumping some more but uh, like you know. No, what is that equity percent maintenance? So, uh, is, you mean to say one, 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 uh, one third, one third, one third? No. Uh. Equity, so, so uh, um, you know we take 3 percent minimum equity. Yeah. Now what we felt was that when company would come you know with a minimum capital base though their requirement would be on higher side. They will register at 1, one lakh and they will come to the incubator and our, our, our you know we get 3 percent of 1 lakh which is like 3, you know nothing 3300 shares right. And then they will pump additional equity. So we, we do not get additional we remain at 3 they get into they, they issue sweat equity. For, to themselves you know. So, sign is losing out in the process whereas they are taking the full advantage of infrastructure, our brand you know, our mentoring time everything. So, so and it happens so that is what we realize boys sometimes are much smarter than you know we felt they would be and they may not come with always that much loyalty yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we, we said that until you get a commercial investment. In commercial investment we define what is commercial investment that is from again external resources not from the promoters. If promoters put in money then they have to you know uh, maintain our equity. But commercial means be it you know angel investor, be it strategic investor, be it VC anything until they get this investment our 3 percent will be maintained. So, so, so they raise capital from 1 lakh to 5 lakh. So, our 3 percent of 5 lakh they have to give us. So, that is what we did it. After that you go for uh, revenue sharing. Revenue sharing is also upfront decided. Upfront decided? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, this is no, no. So, we evolve the process what I am trying to tell you is equity, equity plus rent. So, initially it was vanilla equity. Then we added you know rent for one year that was during crisis time. Then sign said that equity plus differential rent plus revenue. Yeah, it is all basically we evolved over a period of time based on our own experience. Yeah, can I, can and I take one uh, about the inc incorporation. It's very interesting. It's very puzzling also. Anybody has invest uh, uh, incorporated a company or partnership firm? Anyone? No. Any any one of you have incorporated? Raise your hands. Have you have you incorporated? No, actually, unless we incorporate, we don't understand what is the actual incorporation. Thing. That's very interesting. Kind of, no, I have faith. I I, I can't understand. Uh, unless we incorporate a company of our own, huh. our own partnership firm. Huh. I mean, we don't, we can't understand exactly how things happen, what kind of things are there. Right, so but I think you can get an insight if you talk to the but, you but know people who have done it. It's always better to if you open a passport, you understand what exactly the passport is. set of forms, yeah. simple set of forms yeah. which uh, any person can fill it up and then they will guide you there that if, this is, if there is some lacuna in your form they will tell you what are the things required. You have to pay the fees, the incorporation is not very difficult. Yeah. But actually so you know, follow their forms and rules and regulations, it is not very difficult. Yeah, it is not difficult, only thing is that unless you go and open an account you do not understand what is ex exactly opening an account, bank account. That, that is why you want the incubator to go and see in the actual world what is happening. So, you, Actually, you ask them to do that. The incubator also should have. Why I said is that registering a partnership firm does not require more than 600 rupees. Yeah. 
For example, registering a company doesn't require more than 15,000 rupees. This is this is my information which I got. The chartered accountant told company me that. Company requires minimum one lakh. Partnership and not for expenditure of a company. Oh, you are talking about Raj. Oh, that basically they are chartered accountant. It's a package. You give me 15,000, I'll have it I done for you. So that is a different thing. Yeah, partnership firm doesn't require more than 600 rupees to register a firm. Adi mall. No, but there is some small fee. There is a small fee. There is a small fee of 300, 200 something. Yeah. Thank you. I have one other question. Uh, when when VCs invest in companies, they put in um, terms for the founders, uh, like a cliff and vesting schedule, so that the equity that the founders get actually, they they just get incrementally every month over the three or four years. Do you guys do things like that? We don't do that. We, our, like, you know, uh, only, only uh, clause is uh, basically equity maintenance as long as equity is concerned and equity liquidation every round of investment. So, like, you, your point is that if they overperform, then they, uh, we see give them bonus shares, right? That's no. the... The, um, the point is that if one of the founders leaves after three months, hmm. do they still get one third of the equity? Oh, so that is actually getting into founders agreement, right? And now actually we had some bad, bad, bad incidents happening in, happen in, in incubator itself. Company were actually funded and because of certain partner issue, a company got folded up. The reason was exactly like this, that the other partner, he just walked away with the equity. He was not willing to negotiate and give back the balance. Whatever due to him, keep and then give back. He was not willing to do that. So company actually, you know, fold, I folded up or like, you know, it become almost defunct company. After that, now we have started insisting for past two years that you have to have founders agreement. And now we also, uh, in our agreement with the promoters, we insist that you have founders agreement between two of you and you have certain clauses, yeah, which actually ensures that, you know, even if someone moves out, uh, venture keeps on moving ahead. Sorry? 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 Yeah, that is a part of partnership uh, regulation itself, you know. But we don't deal with partnership fund. Yeah. There, there is no equity in partnership. So can we get a sample of this uh, incubator, uh, We can provide. And also partners, uh, founders. Uh, we can do it, provided you don't commercialize those. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just joke. We can provide actually. Uh, actually, our policy document is on our website. We don't put our commercial agreements on website, but our policy agreement is on website. You can download from. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm just joking. It is always like this when the company starts, nobody wants to have any papers. Right. Only when it grows, no, so actually we insist all the things. So like, you know, he mentioned about founders agreement for past two years, we have been insisting in our legal terms, but still people are not doing it. Yeah. yeah? So we have to really vigorously follow up that you get into founders agreement. So yeah. what uh, my suggestion is put founders agreement clearly, a lot of issues come out of that. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of issues, they have sort of exactly right. what So, so now, uh, uh, as long as business model is concerned, some ge ge general tips, you know. Actually, I wouldn't say there is any, you know, single model which can be customized for all. It has to be, you know, customized for your own local situation. We are very successful in equity model, but it may not be suitable for all of all of you. If if the company profiles are not really fundable companies, then doesn't make sense to have equity model. Revenue sharing perhaps could be a better better idea to go for that higher higher level of revenue sharing. So also like I think adoption of appropriate business activities define you know 
uh, uh, rather helps in getting consistent you know revenue but at the same time when it, when when incubator defines his business activity you have to figure out that you don't diffuse from your you know core focus so like i just mentioned in the beginning you know we see a huge revenue in technology commercialization and lots of technologies are lying in iit bombay and we could do it actually now we have got good understanding of various technology their application in the industry we know which industry could absorb them but we don't generally get into it because it diff it will diffuse our focus from you know incubation entrepreneurship to other areas and again i am tell in this case i our board is very conscious you know some of the activities we wanted to get into and board flatly said no so uh, that's why i said that our major strength comes from our, uh, you know from an active board for any incubator that is very important yeah then cost can be passed to the customer if they are established clients yesterday i was mentioning you know equity always don't make sense if you have clients with deep pocket try to in cash as much, as much as possible yeah upfront investment if you are beginning is good if you can source from various government programs you know install the equipments install certain infrastructure at the cost of government so that you can retain some money for your own operations maybe hybrid model uh, you know uh, works that is uh, like you know yeah so for example i have seen certain incubator so some portion is incubate meant for incubator and some portion is actually commercially renting the property i think yours is something similar to that i say say knowledge park is also something like that so you can subsidize the cost for your client companies and charge higher to the established players yeah so that could also work so there are several such you can figure out but you have to essentially customize your own model don't blindly adopt a single model